diet and environmental factors, not on how old they are. So let's say you had two baby alligators. If you feed one of those baby gators a ton of food more than the other one, it could literally grow to be twice the size of its sibling in the same amount of time. If you do that same experiment with two human kids, you're not going to get a kid who's six foot seven in third grade. But the alligator will actually grow larger. So you're going to take a look at one of these guys. They could be 25. They could be 75. You'd have no way of knowing just by looking. And some records in captivity claim to have alligators over 100 years old. So very long-lived animals. Now in here, we mostly feed our alligators raw chicken and other kinds of meat. But in the wild, these are opportunistic hunters. They like to eat things like raccoons, turtles, fish, birds, and of course their favorite, tourists. Uh. Kenny, of course, they don't usually attack people. In fact, attacks on humans are extremely rare. All right, I know everyone thinks they're out to get you, but let's do the math here. We have over two million alligators in the state of Florida, and they really wanted to eat people. You'd have people dying every single day. Instead, we have more people killed annually by vending machines than by alligators. <laughs> Think about that for a minute there. That means every single year, more people get angry. They can't get a candy bar. They shake the machine. It falls and crushes them. More often, than people get attacked by one of those things. Really says a lot about both of our species right there. <laughs> Now for your show, we are going to go ahead and grab one of these guys up and out of here. Now, like I said, we do rotate them all through, so I am looking for a particular individual. So I'm going to grab hold of this guy over here, and we'll bring him up front so everyone's going to be able to see. Give him your big guy. That's cool. Okay. Come on, big guy. Relax. Let's go. Right. You guys having fun yet? I just see a lot of phones like, yeah, he's going to die. All right. So let's go ahead and open up these jaws. Okay. Relax, big guy. Easy. Okay. Relax, buddy. Oh, All right, so take a look inside that alligator's mouth. You will actually see 80 teeth in there. And there are 40 teeth on the top and 40 teeth on the bottom. And they can actually break their teeth off. They grow them back, and they cycle through several thousand teeth in their lifetime. Now that does come in handy because of how hard that gator can bite down. A large alligator can close its jaws with an entire ton of force within that mouth. 2,000 pounds per square inch power. Y'all do not seem impressed with that number. <laughs> Think about that, 2,000 pounds is enough power to easily snap any bone in your weak, fragile human bodies and literally flatten your skull. If you're not impressed by this, it is because y'all are on the wrong side of the glass. <laughs> now, even though they can bite down so hard, you can actually hold their jaws shut with just your bare hands, as you can see me doing here. All that power is for closing, very little for actually opening. So remember, if you're ever about to be attacked by an alligator, don't run away. Just turn around, grab the jaws, and you'll do great. <laughs> Definitely kidding. Run for your life there, guys. But we have all these alligators in here for a reason, though. We are actually an alligator rescue, and these are all considered to be nuisance alligators that are team rescued. Now, a nuisance alligator is one that showed up in somebody's backyard, got in their swimming pool. He ain't fluffy, something like that. Uh. Now, once an alligator does eat somebody's dog, the state is going to send out a trapper to capture and kill the alligator, unless the dog he ate was a Pomeranian, and they just let him go to continue the good work. <laughs> yeah. Now, 
Unfortunately, though, the state of Florida does kill several thousand of our nuisance alligators every year, and that is really sad because that's not the alligator's fault. It's usually a nuisance person who caused the problem, and by that I mean people who feed them. So once you feed him, three things happen. One, he learns to associate you with the food. Two, you don't have the food. Three, you are the food. <laughs> And that's why it's against the law to feed them. Now, once an alligator does become a nuisance alligator, by law, it has to be either killed or kept in captivity. Therefore, most trappers simply kill and sell the alligators to make money. However, myself and the other team members here are the only strictly non-kill trappers in the state. And therefore, instead of killing the alligators to make money, we volunteer our time to rescue these alligators for free. So what we do in here, we do our shows with these nuisance alligators instead of it being turned into a handbag, which you appreciate that, right, big guy? <laughs> yes, he does. That's what we consider an alligator rescue, because every single alligator that you've seen here would have sadly been destroyed if they were not here with us. An alligator wrestling is not like wrestling in a ring. It do not hurt headlock or body slam the alligator. It's actually techniques used by the native tribes of Florida. And one of the maneuvers they would use is holding the jaws of the alligator shut between your chin and your chest, allowing your hands to be free to get a rope and then tie the jaws shut, which sounds like a horrible, dangerous idea. So I'm going to demonstrate it. Now it does make a pretty cool looking photo, so I'll give you guys a thumbs up like this. Or if it does go horribly wrong, get my arm ripped off and I'm bleeding everywhere, I'll give you a thumbs down, okay? <laughs> Alright, don't worry, in that scenario, just at your camera from photo to video. Alright. Come here, big guy. Relax, buddy. Okay. Sometimes people clap. Yeah. And you guys, uh, clapping did not feel forced at all. <laughs> Man, you have one more trick to show you guys. Hang on. Okay. Relax, big guy. I do have one more trick to show you guys, but before I do it, I do want to tell you a little bit about myself too, so you don't think I'm completely insane. I uh, see the stairs out there. I actually have a bachelor's degree in finance and international business from a college in New York. Oh, yeah, it doesn't make a lot of sense to me either. <laughs> But for my entire college career, all I really wanted to do was get out of the shark tank and into the gator pit. Hey. <laughs> now, phrase that I choose to live by is live your dreams and follow your passion. For my entire life, I've been passionate about reptiles and especially alligators. And it has been a dream of mine to be an alligator wrestler ever since I was a little kid. So I feel extremely fortunate to have been given this opportunity. And I encourage everybody out there to pursue your wildest dreams because you never know. They might just come true. Now that being said, the only way that I'm able to continue to do this job full time is through the generous donations of the people in my audience that you guys. Now to capture this job, it's obviously very dangerous, and due to the danger factor, I am not an employee of the park, and instead an unpaid volunteer due to liability and insurance. Liability. <laughs> That way, if the alligator does rip off my hand and eat it in front of me, no one is technically responsible and I get a get well soon card. That is literally our healthcare plan. So at the end of the show, you like the show, you learn about alligators and like the fact that we're a rescue that saves these guys. I do greatly appreciate anything that goes into my little tip jar down there. That is the only way that I get paid here. And it's also what enables our alligator rescue to function and what allows us to continue to go out and rescue more of these beautiful and magnificent animals.